Hey everyone. Um, hey. My my, hey, jo Joe. Uh, I'm Austin uh, from Austin B Media. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. Excuse the nervousness. I was in a rush to get here. I totally messed up the time. So sorry. That's fine. Oh, yeah. All good. We're, we're easy going dudes. We'll yeah, I, I, I got that impression from the documentary. Um, <laughs> I guess let's talk about the documentary. It's a uh, Chop and Steel screening at Tribeca 2022, I think starting. No, it screened yesterday. I think. Yeah, we had our we had our premiere last night. That's right, the world premiere. The world premiere, the illustrious words. Um, so, uh, Ben, uh, uh um, I want to ask, what made you want to make this documentary? Well, I've known Nick and Joe since uh, making my first feature comedy. Uh, Quinnebago Man, and they played a pivotal role in that film, and we've been friends ever since, and uh, I watched and was a huge fan of their morning show appearances in the Found Footage Festival, and knew that they could carry a movie and hoped that we could work together again, and then when they got sued, uh, um, that's when I basically knew that we had a story, so started making the film then. And that was uh that was 2017. Yeah, so right? four years ago. So yeah. Five, yeah. Years ago. five now, yeah. Yeah. So the movie took that long to come together. Yeah, and you know, it's it's funny because I, I was watching the documentary and I had this realization, oh Joe, Nick, they're from found footage. I didn't even make that connection until like halfway in. Uh, it, <laughs> I literally have like a note here where i was like oh wait joe and nick founded the found footage festival like in all caps um <laughs> yeah you'd seen the show before uh you know i'm, I'm familiar with the festival but i've not seen the show oh okay okay uh, yeah it, it's on my uh festival bucket list yeah yeah where um, are you based uh oak grove arkansas so just okay. if you know where branson is just right yep. outside there i okay. um and um i did get a kick out of the kansas city uh joke you make about the um kansas city anchors because i've met a few of them and your assessment is exactly right <laughs> on them um, okay good <laughs> especially if you're talking nick vasos the um oh yeah um, oh, we're getting we're getting specific, oh, specific we're taking, names here. Yeah, we're right. taking, taking googling it now. <laughs> the right. Kansas City local morning news market. Woo. Yeah, yeah, coming out coming out hot. Austin B. Um, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> so, talking about uh, morning shows, um, I I when I was watching the clips that you provided uh, in the documentary, I I was just thinking to myself, how do you navigate just not being found out? on these morning shows well yeah i mean we we rehearse these pretty significantly you know and uh whenever we go into them it, it, it's always it's always like i don't know like it, we, we think about it these these a lot we rehearse every line and, and there's some room for improvising so we go into it knowing what we're gonna do um but uh yeah i mean what what was the question <laughs> I don't know the question of how do we navigate these? Yeah, I mean, I, it's probably a weird question, but it's like, I just imagine myself going to like, I don't know, Wisconsin was one of the places you visited. And they're yeah. like, they're just totally buying it. They're just like, yeah, of course, these are strong men. We, we don't. Well, I, think, I think, first of all, like, it's always run by like, you know, kids right out of college. So they really don't know what they're doing. And then they, uh, and then uh, I, I think they're so busy. There's only like, like two people working. And a lot of times the anchors will also be running the show. So I don't know. They're always frazzled and they're always underpaid and they're always understaffed. And uh, these, these networks don't put a lot of money into these things. So it's kind of easy to get on these shows. Like anybody could really get on them. Um, so, yeah. It's just so, being yeah, bored enough pretty... to try to actually get on them. I think that's, <laughs> that's, what, it, that's what it took for us. You know, being bored enough is what cr helped me create uh, this whole thing. I was watching YouTube videos all day, and then I was like, you know, I probably should do something about that, where, you know, 
I already talk about movies and things like that. So I was like, you know, what? I'm bored enough. Why don't I just try? Yeah. And then, yeah. We come from a small town in Wisconsin. So like we're, we're good at entertaining ourselves when we're, when we're bored, we figured it out. Yeah. Um, and, um, uh, so you've met Howie a, a few times. Um, and I maybe actually no, the guy's, Guys, you've never met Howie, really, right? I mean, you you were... No, we just saw him from the stage and, you know, talking about us on America's Got Talent, but we haven't met him in person yet as ourselves. We, you know, so, talked to him briefly on the stage. Right, okay. but he's a huge fan. We, we got him to be in the documentary, and he's a huge fan of Joe and Nick and follows uh, them on TikTok, their VCR party account. And, uh, yeah, so he comes in at the end of the movie and... Uh, sort of gives his blessing for their urinating all over. We're, <laughs> we're going to meet him, though. Down. Eventually, we're going to meet yeah. him. Yeah. <clears throat> that, that, so that, many that, times. Oh, go ahead, Baron. That was a really, that was a really interesting thing about meeting Howie Mandel is like, he independently, so obviously he had the face-to-face -face interaction with Chop and Steel on the set of America's Got Talent. But independent of that, and he appreciated that, that moment and what the guys were doing there and that hit them pranking AGT. But independently of that, he also follows the guys on Twitter or Instagram and, and uh, YouTube and watches VCR party as a fan. And he didn't put it together that those same guys who do VCR party were on AGT and peed the stage until we interviewed him, which is so crazy to us like that he has not only like, had all these close run-ins with you guys throughout the years, but that he also just like, because he likes weird shit yeah. and crazy old videos, like is a fan of you guys and then had this interaction with you guys on AGT. And he didn't put it all together until we Austin, were there with him, which is so Austin, have amazing. you ever seen the Frank Pachowski clip? Uh, um, Dancing with Frank Pachowski? I have it's not. It's this weird uh, public access show from Los Angeles. And in, in 1999, this guy, Frank Pachowski, got away with two episodes of the show. And uh, he's like dancing in the semicircle of elderly people. And he's wearing a Speedo. And it's just it's just really weird video. And we featured it in our show. It turns out he knows Howie Mandel. And Howie Mandel did a documentary about this guy. So like our paths have crossed in the weirdest ways with Howie Mandel. And yeah, we still haven't met him yet, but uh, eventually we will. Yeah, because even in just the documentary, um, I think you're on a late night show and then it says like coming up Howie Mandel and then you uh, are on America's Got Talent and then it's just like, okay. And the reason I was asking is I was wondering if you had asked him about the VHS tape he narrated um, that you guys found. Um, and if, yeah, where do I come from? Yeah. The yeah, where do I come from? Yeah. No, but I, we will definitely ask him about that. We have a bunch of footage featuring him because he did a lot of like VHS stuff in the 80s. Um, so, yeah, well, we got a lot of questions. But Bobby's World, I mean, we got some tapes. I got of a million cartoon. questions about Bobby's World. Yeah, so yeah, we're ready to go. <laughs> also, fun yep. fact, Howie Mandel was the voice of Gizmo in Gremlins. What? Yes. That's yeah. right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and don't even get me started on Walk Like a Man. You know, oh yeah, yeah. Many times on HBO. Just yeah. a huge fan of that film. It's I mean, just, we still we remarkable. still watch that every year at Christmas in my family. So it's a, really yeah, it's a really it's a pivotal <laughs> pivotal <laughs> film for us. Not, not much of a Christmas movie, but that's a it's a good time to watch it. Yeah, I've yeah. honestly probably seen that movie thirty times because it was just <laughs> summer was when I should have been outside exercising. I think I'd be inside watching HBO, and that was always on. <laughs> But that was like the early years of HBO, and that thing ran oh, forever. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of those every day on HBOs. Yeah. Which yeah. also, Police Academy 2 and Police Academy 3 were every day on HBO movies. And, and we have uh, Bobcat. We yeah. got Bobcat. And I told Bobcat about that last night. I said, I had a friend who lived on a farm, and we could have just like been playing on hay bales and like riding motorcycle and dirt bikes through the fields. We sat inside and we watched Police Academy 2 and laughed at, <laughs> laughed at Zed and Sweet Chuck. And 
Yeah. And that explains a lot, Joe, actually. That puts a lot of things in <laughs> He could have just like been out flourishing in the world and seeing butterflies and no, he's, we watched Police Academy 3 for the 15th time. <laughs> I think we made the right call. <laughs> I got allergies, oh so. <laughs> oh yeah, it, it's like, a, um, um, it, it's, it's really the worst part of the year for me because allergies are a full swing and then... Um, I live in a rural community, so um, we have to burn trash and everything like that. So it's just like the moment you step outside, your eyes start watering, and you're just like, oh, oh I yeah. can't see, and I'm trying to drive. Let me just slow down for a bit. Um, Show up the YouTube video. Stay inside. That's my yeah. advice. Yeah. Um, but, um, Ben, so you, you say this is this is a documentary full of just tons of footage. Um, from I'm guessing probably two two or three years I'm guessing, um, and how did you even go about um, putting that story, editing the story, um, into something that felt cohesive, and not just a hey here's all the greatest hits of what's going on with Nick and Joe. Well, I think you're. Is your question how the documentary came together, or is it yeah, that, they, that the guys are, you know, a lot of what Nick and Joe do are, you know, edit just that's, that's probably a better way to put it, digestible put it yeah. bits. Yeah, and so they did a lot of the heavy lifting, honestly. Like it was, it, we got very lucky that they um, have such incredible archival material. So they provided us with um, photos and videos and. Um, so it's kind of a documentarian's dream. And then when we met their parents, uh, in fact, I just gave Nick the, the big Ziploc bag back of like all the early childhood photos that you see throughout um, the early part of the movie. And um, so I think a combination of like overbearing parents having lots of uh, <laughs> pictures of their kids. Well, we're, we're both <laughs> firstborns too. So, you know, the firstborns always get all the yeah. photos. The well second. photographed. Yeah. 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 You guys are clearly the favorites. And I hope oh, you're still 100%. in the yeah. Stars of the show. Yeah. I want sure. your your brothers and your sisters to see this and know that you guys are your parents' favorites. I'm, exactly. Big middle yeah. finger up to them. <laughs> um but but yeah so in that sense you know we just got it was our job was easy it was just cherry picking the funniest bits um from um their routines but then as the film progresses you know with making documentaries you have to just sort of put things in place it's so much about casting and nick and joe are so likable and so funny that i knew that you know once they had this conflict of being sued however it was going to play out was going to resolve in some sort of satisfactory way. I didn't know what that was going to be. And for a long time, I've tried to push it in a different direction. But, um, you know, often what happens is the documentary tells you the story rather than the other way around. So uh, what we ended up getting was better than, um, than what I'd hoped for. So we sort of inadvertently made the I love you man of documentaries. That's actually probably a good way of putting it, you know. Um... I think there's a lot of humor in the documentary and it gives you like um, I was talking about another documentary. Um, oh, I forget what it is. I think it was uh, Mooptopia. It's, it's a sh documentary short that's screening also at Tribeca. Um, I knew nothing about Mooptopia, uh, who she is, uh, what her background was. And I think this does a similar thing of saying, here's who these guys are, here's all the background knowledge before you get into the gray um, television um, suing and all that stuff. Um, and yeah, I, I think it's a wonderful documentary and I hope uh, people check it out uh, at Tribeca or whenever it gets uh, distribution. Thanks, yeah. Austin. Well, thanks for taking the time today, man. I really appreciate the interview. Yeah, thank, thank you all for just being so receptive and uh, just telling me your, your stories. Um, it's, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, awesome. same here. Yeah, thanks, awesome. Thanks. Yeah, thank awesome. you. Thank you all.